Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining our meetup today. Uh, it's great to see everybody, and uh, we will get started. Uh, my name is Tamo Nakahara. I work at a company called Weaveworks, and uh, excited to see people join here on a topic that's a little bit uh, new for us uh, on uh, policy management. If um, you have uh, heard of our company, Weaveworks, uh, we recently acquired a company called Magalix, and that's why we're very excited to um, have this topic of um, policy management that will start kind of weaving in more and more, haha, pun intended, uh, weaving in more and more with um, the GitOps that hopefully you've come to know um, us for um, over the many years, uh, especially as uh, our uh, open source project Flux has been very much part of um, our growing area. And if anybody's been following us, uh, security is a critical, critical part of how we design the project um, and how uh, many enterprise customers and a lot of platforms run by Microsoft and Amazon and VMware and others have come to trust this. So this is very much part of our company's evolution. And um, we're really excited to kick off these talks where we'll talk about security policy and other areas that are really important. So I'm glad to see people joining here. Uh, if you haven't heard of us, um, welcome. Uh, our website is weave.works, and we're um, um, a company based, uh, well, we you, before COVID, we had offices in San Francisco, London, New York, Berlin, um, and other cities. Uh, and um, uh, you've probably heard of us because a lot of what we do is founded on open source. Um, a core project, uh, of course, is Flux that I mentioned that now has been in the CNCF and we are actually literally uh, minutes away for uh, completing our final steps to getting to graduation. We've been an incubating project for uh, about a year now um, and before that we were a sandbox project. And uh, it's really the project that kind of started the term GitOps that our CEO coined. Uh, and then an extension of that has been a project uh, called Flagger which has now been folded into um, Flux uh, at this point, I guess a couple of years ago, so not recent. Um, but it helps you do like canary deployments, blue green. Um, the, the term is progressive delivery. Uh, and um, it's pretty much been, uh, if you've come to any of our talks, it's sort of the evolution of Kubernetes is GitOps. And then Flux is an extension of Kubernetes and works very closely to deliver those GitOps capabilities. And then Flagger is built upon that as well um, and can work independently of Flux, but obviously works quite well to um, provide that type of um, progressive delivery. So it's been a really interesting journey um, that's been core to um, what WeWorks has offered. Um, and then we have many, many more open source projects uh, than, than are listed here. So um, if you want to check us out, um, you can go to weave.works uh, as well as uh, check out our GitHub pages, uh, where of course we have our many projects. Uh, and we're really excited that our latest um, product is called Weave GitOps and is built on Flux. Uh, great, so a little bit of um, housekeeping. Uh, so we're really excited, as I mentioned, um, this is based on the acquisition of a company called uh, Magalix. And we're really excited now to be working with uh, Tony Chong, who's uh, joined the family and um, is really gonna be talking about a lot of great stuff that we'll be thinking about moving forward. Um, the duration can be up to 60 minutes, but I think we'll probably be doing more of a shorter one, maybe 30, 40 minutes, depends on how many questions you have. Uh, and I'm seeing it's fun that um, a lot of people are posting, um, you know, where they're joining from. I'm joining from San Francisco, so please share that in the chat. Uh, make sure to choose uh, to everyone uh, in the drop down for your chat so we can all see your comments. Um, and please definitely post whatever questions you have, um, whatever problems you're trying to solve that you're hoping this talk might um, help with. Um, these are all areas uh, that we're always you know, very, very passionate and dedicated about to making sure people are successful. Um, and actually, I'll share a, a little background of our company. We've now been running Kubernetes in production for over seven years um, with our own products. So um, we've been kind of at the forefront of this space. We help a lot of enterprise customers um, be successful in their cloud native journey and using Kubernetes using both our products, our open source, as well as um, professional services that we offer. So if there are any areas that you are having trouble and wherever areas you're just at the beginner level getting started or uh, need to take the next step of your journey, uh, this is pretty much what WeWorks is about. So please uh, don't be shy to ask us any questions. Uh, so with that, I will now um, hand it over to uh, Tony, 
who will talk about Magalix. Um, and then you'll see how um, it's a little bit open ended right now. We'll have some conversations about how um, the Magalix uh, original product will be evolved to work with Flux and um, GitOps. Um, but if you haven't seen Flux before, we'll be sending you all these links um, after this. So if you've registered and then uh, we will, Stacy here, our community manager, will follow up with an email to you with these various links, um, as well as uh, a link to the recording for today's talk. Uh, so with that, I'll hand it over to Tony. Awesome. Thank you, Tamaki. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sounds great. Uh, great. All right, let me share my screen here. All right, if you can, someone can confirm. See the yes. screen. All right, awesome. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Tony. I'll be your speaker today. Um, I've been I've been working with computers since my late teens. Uh, just tell you a little bit about, excuse me, take a step back. To tell you a little bit about myself, uh, I've been doing, working with computers for, you know, quarter of a century now. Uh, I've played almost every role uh, in computing. But uh, today I want to talk to you as, you know, one of your peers. Um, and uh, in my own travels, you could, I've used GitOps in production. Uh, and so you can think of this more of kind of like a testimonial about uh, GitOps, what it is, you know, why there's value add in GitOps. We'll talk a little bit about the Weave Magalix implementation of GitOps. Talk about some, you know, the, the solutions it provides, how you get started. And at the end, you know, we'll open up the floor to socialize because, hey, it's a meetup. I like to keep it pretty loose. And I would love to hear from you folks uh, to share some uh, of your own stories or maybe even use cases on how GitOps could potentially be useful. Uh, and like everyone else, um, I'll tell you where I'm from. I uh, am based out of Washington, but I'm currently in Los Angeles right now uh, visiting my family because I just, uh, had a four, uh, just had a daughter uh, four months ago and it's the first time she's uh, meeting her grandparents. So um, with that said, let's get right into it. So what is GitOps? Uh, GitOps, in my own, in my own view, is uh, two, two things that are, that are melded together to create a very robust uh, CD solution for your infrastructure. So, on one, so GitOps, obviously, on one end of it, you have Git, you know, version control, source control, versioning. So if you take all of the great things that come with Git, and then you add declarative infrastructure, you know, declarative configurations, applications, if you add that together and you put that in Git, uh, and you use that as the source of truth uh, that represents what your environment looks like, and those two are constantly in sync, that in a nutshell, in my opinion, is, is, is GitOps, right? It's just a simplified uh, definition. Uh, and to quote uh, someone that I think is an icon in the space, Kelsey Hightower, it's just version CICD on top of declarative infrastructure. And these days, uh, you know, it's everything is code. And so if you have CICD, on top of um, you know, declarative infrastructure and applications, and you're already doing you know, continuous delivery and you have this process, you know, why would you need GitOps? And I think first, even from my own experience, I think the pressure uh, for moving fast increases the likelihood of making a mistake. Like we talk about DevOps, all the benefits of the cloud, cloud native Kubernetes, everything's supposed to be moving fast, you know, stay stay on the cutting edge of technology, but you know, that's good when everything's in motion, but you know, actually trying to get through that first um, wave of getting, you know, moving towards cloud native, it's, it's tough, it's challenging, and it's easy to make a lot of mistakes. Uh, even in your current processes, there are you know, probably human uh, steps for human intervention, and anytime there's human intervention, you know, there could be a mistake made. Maybe not on purpose, you know, we all make them, I'm still learning from mine from years ago. So, you know, we, you know, making mistakes can happen even when, you know, even if you have looked over something, you know, many, many times. And so while you're working, let's say on a production system, you know, if you have a reference or a working configuration, that to me increases confidence of, and when making changes. So a good example is like, um, if you're doing a database migration, you probably want to do a backup first. Right? In case something happens, you could just, you know, there's a way to roll it back. So having something to serve as a reference uh, 
you know, it lowers, it lowers that fear. And trust me, I've been in places where uh, people are scared to deploy. And so they don't deploy for six months. And then there's so many changes, like, the, you know, the deploy is going to go bad. You already know what's going to happen. So having a reference um, is definitely uh, something that, uh, you know, I would, I would want when making changes. And then once you figure all of that out, once you have your flow, your development flow, um, then, then you have to look at, okay, is everything secure? Is my cloud provider, is it, are, my, are, the, are the settings of my cloud provider secure? My, when we're talking cloud native, so is my Kubernetes secure? Are my containers secure? Are my, is my application secure? Am I hearing to all these standards? If I'm in an industry that's you know, heavily regulated, even lightly regulated, or we just have you know, different rules that we, that we uh, uh, you know, abide by in a team, you know, you add all of these factors in and you, know, you can go crazy. Uh, I'll, coin, uh, I'll coin this, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna reiterate a term that my, uh, a friend of mine coined, uh, he called it commit hell. If you've ever been in a situation where you're making these changes that don't work and you're just constantly committing and making changes and then you're at a point where you don't even know what you're doing anymore. Uh, if you felt things like this uh, and then you multiply that by uh, the amount of configuration in your cloud and Kubernetes, I mean, you're going to go crazy. Um, I've had sleepless nights, believe me. And so where does, where does Weaveworks, Flux, Magalix, you know, where does, why does this even matter with GitOps? And so if we go back to what uh, the Kelsey Hightower quotes, um, you know, we're CICD on top of um, uh, declarative infrastructure. And so I would say Flux then represents the CD, the continuous deployment piece of GitOps. Right? Flux is a piece of software that you install that interacts with your Git repository and your Kubernetes uh, clusters and basically syncs the two uh, from left to right, meaning from Git to Kubernetes uh, every time, anytime a change is made, probably in like when you tag something or maybe in your main branch or something like that. And so, Flux enables you to move fast. Obviously, if you make a change, you have a feature branch, you make a change, let's say you have a new microservice that's in a new branch, you, you open up a merge request or pull request, depending on which, you know, which solution you're using, the peer reviews it, they approve it, that goes to the main branch, and then Flux, Flux would then take it and then deploy it out to your cluster. But the issue with that process is that you still have a human reviewing the code. Now that's good and that's great. And you should always do that uh, when applicable, but you know, anyone is prone to making a mistake or to overlook something anytime, especially if you had the things we talked about, the pressure, you had context switching, uh, maybe people aren't as familiar with Kubernetes because they're not you know, Kubernetes administrators, maybe they're just back in developers or something like that. And so Flux solves the CD problem, but not necessarily the review challenge, uh, if that makes sense. And so to me, just the natural progression of, uh, of GitOps is making sure that there are safeguards in place to, to ensure that the most common configurations are, are always in place. That way, um, the things that are always biting you in the backside, that the, the, the people are always misconfiguring. The, what policy helps you do, it helps you implement codified standards. So the WeWorks or the former Magalix policies, what are they? They're, the policy with capital P, they're regal based as code standards. And I'll just stop right there for a second because there's a lot of you know, buzzwords here, right? So policies with capital P, is, we're talking about particular, particularly uh, we've the Magalix policies, which is now, you know, we've, we've policy engine. Um, what is Rego? Rego is actually uh, based uh, from open policy agents, which is an open source uh, graduated project, you know, CNCF graduated project that is essentially policy as code. And what are standards? Well, they're just any kind of rules you want to uh, adhere to. And so what I wanna show you is a quick technical demo because you know, what is, a, what is a, a presentation without a technical demo about how powerful this policy engine can be uh, using a very simplified uh, example. And then I'm gonna talk about how we apply that to the enterprise and, and where um, Flux and uh, WePolicy come into play. 
Let me do a quick refresh here. So what you're looking at here is uh, Planet Open Policy Agent Org. This is a tool that you can use to test uh, Rego code against, uh, in this case, JSON payloads. And uh, the cool thing about this site is that they give you some examples out of the box. So we'll go to Kubernetes. And they have uh, an example called image safety, which is ensuring every container image is from a trusted registry. This is one of the most common requests I've heard from folks like yourself regarding policies, meaning, you know, how do I, how do I lock down things and how do I ensure, um, you know, we're using approved settings such as, you know, a container registry. So let's click on this for a second and I'll show you what we're looking at and I'll show you kind of how easy Rego is and how, and then how it applies to your, how it can apply to your enterprise. So on the right hand side, we have a payload uh, for the mission review. So this is a request that the Kubernetes API would see for scheduling, I believe. And for those that have worked with Kubernetes manifest before, I'm sure this piece looks familiar uh, if you wanna uh, schedule a pod, uh, but it's probably, you know, you've probably worked with it in YAML. And so this particular pod has a front end uh, and a MySQL backend. On the left side, you have the policy. Now, what I'm gonna just break this down for you line by line, just to show you what's going on. And then so, so just plant the seed in your, in your mind on how powerful this thing can really be. So let's do this line by line real quick. So the way that Rego works, top down, it's top down in this case. And in order for a policy, in this case, it's like a negative state, in order for it to be in violation, every statement needs to be true. So in this case, we'll start with line 22, input.request.kind.kind must equal pod. And so if we, if we walk the path of this JSON, you see the input is at this top level. We'll see requests, kind, kind, pod. So that first statement is true. We go down to the second line here, 28. You'll see that the sum keyword declares local variable. So in this case, sum declares the variable of container. And the same thing, we'll walk down the path, input requests, object, spec, and containers. Now you see your containers is an array. And so in the code, container is equivalent to this block right here on the right. And then finally, line 29 starts with is a built-in function in, in, in OPA slash Rego. It's exactly what it is, does something start with whatever you specify. And in this case, this container.image, which is this.image, and you have two, does any one of those not start with huli.com? If that is true, then kick off this violation, this message here, which is part of this deny statement. So if you click on coverage and hit evaluate, green represents uh, true, red does not. And you can see here, based on this payload, we got all the way to not starts with huli.com. And you can see that image that my image, my SQL does not start with huli.com. And so you're in violation. And if we did this, huli.com, excuse me, and a slash, and hit evaluate, oops, and hit evaluate, you get no violations. So now this is a pretty simple, a simple example. But then think about situations like, if we're talking Kubernetes, let's talk about CPU uh, you know, resources, uh, limits and requests. Same thing for memory. Maybe you don't want people, uh, maybe you want people attaching the, the read-only file, you know, the file system is read-only. Maybe you don't want people having privilege escalation in your container. Maybe you want to specify, maybe you want to specify uh, you know, additional Linux capabilities or something like that. You, because, um, Rego understand, understands uh, structured uh, data. And since Kubernetes, since this manifest and even Helm and other, other uh, Terraforms, another example, because these are all structured, you could write policy against that because you, you know the structure of these manifests, you know how, your, how the Helm structure is structured. Uh, and so you could basically codify what you want or don't want in a configuration. So rereading the statement, 
policies are regular based as code, as code standards. So you can understand standards compliance posture at scale. What does that mean? That means I could take one policy and apply that across my entire fleet of Kubernetes clusters. I can even do things like dev should dev can have one set of configurations that are maybe a bit more loose. And as you promote through your as you promote through your chain uh, until you get to production, you can make your uh, policies tighter and tighter. So you can mix and match, but the idea here is that you could write policy once and apply them everywhere. So this is what we call a runtime check, right? It checks to see based on your current uh, running Kubernetes config, how are you doing against our set of default policies? And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. You can then take these weave policies and apply them as an emission controller. So then you could apply these policies at what we call deploy time. So if, so if at runtime, you are, you get to see what objects, what deployed objects are in uh, violation. What adding an emission controller does is you're telling everyone, hey, I have enough to deal with. I don't want any more new violations entering my system. That's what that is. So you could take the same policy and block and, and block any violating entity at deploy time using emission controllers. And then lastly, what the poly, what our policy is you can do, it helps you shift left. What does that mean? That means you could take these same policies, not only check your, 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 your runtime Kubernetes configuration, block new objects from being scheduled that violate policies, but you could also do that at commit time. And so what does that mean? When, when developers are building maybe a new microservice or maybe they're modifying a configuration in a Helm chart or Kubernetes manifest, um, maybe they, they fat finger the configuration and instead of having like one rep, you know, two replicas, they only have one replica or anything, anything that goes against uh, what, you know, anything you want to govern, we could apply that at, at, at develop time, right? So developers can know whether or not their, uh, their changes are, are going to violate policies before even attempting to deploy, uh, you know, such a change. And all this is possible with Magalix. Um, you know, all of this stuff is agent-based. There's a UI uh, that you can see. We have built-in reports um, and we tie it to, you know, standards. So the idea here is that uh, if you were to onboard, you know, with, with, the, with the WeaveWorks solution out of the box, you would, you would see right away just kind of where you sit um, from a standards perspective. And so, you know, tying all that together, I know I said a lot, but tying all that together, let's go back to the original, uh, you know, why, why would I need this? So, you know, we're moving fast, we have a nice flow, you know, we have a system in place, but again, we have, we, we, we have this human intervention piece that, um, you know, that anyone can make a mistake at any time, right? People can overlook something at any time if you know what configs should be in place if there is a standard. Uh, not only does Flux help you move fast, but if you add policies on top of that, you can move fast without making the same mistakes that you know you shouldn't make, right? In regards to configuration. Because everything is in Git, everything is version controlled, you now have this reference working configuration. Right? Flux enables the constant syncing um, from left to right, from code to cloud, uh, continuously, right? And so if you make it, if you, if there, if the, if a mistake does slip by, misconfiguration does slip by, and it happens to go to your production, since you're under version control anyway, just roll it back and wait for the, wait for the, wait for the sync to happen. So we just solved that problem too. And lastly, you know, again, talking about Security, you know, just even access control uh, is a big one. Coupled with standards, you know, PCI DSS, HIPAA, I don't know, CIS benchmarks, you know, just another standard that people people go by. And in san and in your sanity, right? Of course. Uh, how do we enforce this at scale? Well, we have policies again, which is 
write once, apply everywhere. And so, you know, because this is a meetup and, you know, obviously where WeWorks, but just for a second, just to be vendor agnostic, I think, you know, I've adopted GitOps, you know, even from a, a principal point of view uh, in production at a couple of shops, um, you know, some from the, you know, one from the ground up. And so if you feel like everything should be uh, in code and you are moving towards that, in order to adopt this, obviously it's GitOps, so it should be Git-based, makes sense. Uh, and kind of the next step is if you're using some kind of Git development flow, we can reuse the same things. The, 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 the whole point uh, of GitOps is to not disrupt the way that people work. It's actually meant to enhance and to um, empower uh, people to invest in automation, right? You want more confidence and just kind of letting your hands go and let the machine do its thing, right? I know that, you know, like how does, how does AWS deploy what, like 30,000 times a day, right? And I don't think somebody's there, you know, sma you know, button smashing. I don't think so, right? And because everything's in code, I feel like dev and ops are aligned again, right? I, I don't know about you, but I feel like at some point in this DevOps history, you know, dev and ops on the application side, they came together, figured out how to scale, but then, but then, you know, it got, things got too big. And so now you have multiple layers again, and there's, there's silos. Uh, but, you know, I think from an application perspective, now that everything's in code, we're reusing the same tools that everyone's using, both ops and dev folks. I think, again, we're starting to have alignment, right? We're, we're talking from the same base, which is based off of Git. And the, I think the most interesting thing that I've come across is that your team or your teams are probably already more than halfway there, right? If you're doing continuous de delivery, which um, again is basically automating as much as you can until maybe the very end where somebody says go or no go and hits that button to deploy. If you're already doing that and you want to make the jump to maybe you know, get more automated or maybe let your hands go. You know, Flux obviously is a great solution to sync code to cloud. And if you're doing that already, you probably wanna put as many safeguards as possible in between that. And that's where policy kicks in. And so I know I jumped through that. Um, I'm sorry I didn't take a poll in the beginning to see just kind of where everyone is. I, I hopefully uh, I covered enough ground to you know, what the appetites of both folks that are, are just now getting introduced to the topic uh, and those that are maybe looking to uh, take that next leap in their automation journey. Um, I hope that has resonated with at least some of you and I hope we've all learned something today. Uh, and that'll conclude uh, my presentation. So hopefully we can uh, you know, take questions. Uh, I would love to hear some of your stories, of, you know, war stories about misconfiguration and maybe even talk about uh, maybe discuss your own use case and maybe how, um, you know, this Weave solution can uh, plug right in. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thanks for such a great presentation. And I did put here in the chat, like, <laughs> you know, as uh, WeaveWorks has acquired Megalix, uh, policy is kind of a new area for me. So even things like Rego, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, I was looking it up and looking up all these terms. So I put in the chat here, if anybody is also looking for just, you know, more basic stuff or reviewing the content, you know, please don't um, uh, be shy to ask. Um, and uh, what we've done with some of our workshops is, um, you know, we can stop the recording as well if people feel um, that it's easier to just jump on um, microphone and, and ask questions. So if that's something you'd like to do, then uh, please use the raise hand function and we're happy to um, stop the recording and, and transition over to that. Otherwise, uh, I'll give you all a, a few moments to put your questions into the chat and we'll be happy to address them. Um, as we're waiting, uh, Stacy, uh, maybe we can switch back to your final slide, which showed our future events. Uh, as I mentioned, if you're brand new, welcome. Um, these are um, a variety of community meetups that we've been putting out uh, through either 
our Weave user groups or um, through our GitOps community groups as they are um, you know, valid. And so Stacy and team have been busy at work providing all kinds of fantastic talks like this one. Um, Stacy, I don't know if you have that slide. Um, we'll share, thank you. Uh, so you can see March is already a very uh, busy event. Today's talk was on policy management. Um, if uh, you are new to um, Flux, the, the project that I mentioned that kind of helped us kick off the term GitOps, we've got plenty of talks and workshops that um, will get you started. And the workshops also include really helpful uh, intro talks on like the intro to Kubernetes and GitOps. Uh, as I mentioned a little bit in the beginning, you know, there's this um, evolution, even Brendan Burns Burns, the co-founder of, um, of Kubernetes, uh, kind of helped give us a great statement and, and a talk that we did at one of our GitOps events saying that it really is this evolution. And um, often people who are new will ask, you know, like, oh, so Flux is doing this um, GitOps part. And we'll often say, well, it's actually Kubernetes doing one part of it and Flux doing another part of it together. Um, so uh, you will get an email with um, any of these links. And also um, we are posted on meetup.com. That's our um, probably best calendar of events. So Stace will be sharing that with you as well. So I see a question, so I will point to it um, or uh, a sharing. So I appreciate it. So we have someone saying uh, we have gatekeeper, sorry, gatekeeper as admission controller. Does, oops, does the policies in GitOps slash Flux overlap with gatekeeper? Fantastic question. Thank you so much for that. Sure, I guess I'll take that one. Uh, so yes, there is overlap. Um, out of the box, we don't enable the mission controller. So if we have one going, that's great. Uh, it does serve the same purpose. I think where there's differences, it comes the value add is in the in the UI, right? I think uh, with with Magalix, not only are you able to visualize how many times that mission controller like there's violations, how many times there are, but you can also um, visual uh, using the ui uh, group more than one policy together so it's a little bit more uh, in this state it's a little bit more click opsy uh, than it is gatekeeper uh, but there is overlap they do serve the same, same purpose but uh, the big difference is magalix is you know it, it has a value add of visualization reporting and um you know you just write it once and you can apply it everywhere uh using the the gui Excellent. Thanks for that. Um, and anyone else, as I mentioned, if you want to raise your hand, we're happy to stop the recording. And uh, yeah, you're welcome. Getting some more thank yous. Awesome. Uh, Stacy will also be sharing in the email uh, links to our Slack channels. So if you come up with a question or you share this with your team and you have questions later, we're happy to continue chatting with you uh, in our Slack channel. So you can see Tony and others there as well. Cool. Well, if that's it, thank you so much for joining. We really love um, seeing our community members come here. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm also learning as well. So if there are any areas here where you think it's really, really relevant to be uh, understanding stuff about policy or how you'd like to use it. Uh, you'll see Tony and us in the Slack and we love any of your feedback on this. So thank you. And thanks, Tony. It's really great uh, chatting with you. Uh, likewise, have a good one, everyone. Thank you for All your right. time. Thanks, Stacy. Thanks, everybody. Bye.